Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the pathologically high and pathologically low cardiac output. We are going to discuss the conditions which lead to pathologically high and pathologically low cardiac output. We are discussing the chapter of cardiac output, venous return and their regulations and we are discussing different factors in different conditions which basically lead to uh, high and low cardiac output and abnormalities in the cardiac output and venous return and their regulation. Now first of all we will con uh, discuss those conditions which cause pathologically high cardiac output. Then we will discuss the conditions which basically cause low cardiac output. First of all we will see that here we have drawn a short circuit of the heart here we have the heart with right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle and here the iota is bringing the blood to the body and the, then the body consumes the oxygen and different nutrients and the deoxygenated blood is returning to the heart. The first condition which we are going to discuss which leads to pathologically high cardiac output is beriberi. Now, we see in this graph that here we have plotted the cardiac output the cardiac output and we have plotted the cardiac output as percentage of the normal as percentage of the normal so at this point we have the cardiac output as 100% of the normal 100% of the normal this is cardiac output here we have plotted the cardiac index which is basically cardiac output per liter per minute per meter square of the body surface area now we have drawn two more lines which shows the control line in young adults and another line which is control for the older adults that are up around 45 years old, old or more. Now if we see we have plotted different conditions which causes high and then different conditions which causes low cardiac output and in between we have drawn the control point. The control point is something which shows the, the control level or the normal the normal level of the cardiac output that is around 100% of the normal. 100% of the normal at this point. Other conditions are either above this line or below this line. So to start with the first condition which leads to high cardiac output is beriberi. Beriberi is a condition in which there is a deficiency of vitamin B1 or thiamine. B1 or thiamine. There is deficiency of vitamin B1. Basically, vitamin B1 or thiamine helps the tissues here to extract energy or nutrients from the coming carbohydrates or other food material. Now if there is deficiency of the thiamine, suppose we have cells over here and we have deficiency of B1 or thiamine, the cells will not be able to extract energy from the nutrients. The cells will not be able to extract energy from the nutrients and these cells will be sending signals to the brain and the heart that Nf, new, NF blood flow is not coming because the energy is not being extracted so it sends a signal as if there is decreased blood supply. So this thing is compensated by the heart by increasing the cardiac output. It, increasing the, it increases the contractility and increases the blood flow towards these cells. But the problem is not with the blood flow. The blood flow is already normal. The problem is with the deficiency of thiamine due to which the cells are unable to extract energy from the coming nutrients. The blood flow is normal. But the brain, the human body perceive is a deficiency of blood flow and so to compensate that the heart starts pumping more and more blood towards these cells and it leads to pathologically high cardiac output. So here we have the 100% line which is showing 100% of the normal cardiac output or the control point we are uh, comparing this with the control point the control point is here which is showing the 100% of the normal cardiac output 
but in very very the cardiac output has reached this point it has increased quite above the control point so this condition the very very or deficiency of thiamine is one thing which causes increased or pathologically high cardiac output now the second example is av shunt or arteriovenous shunt now what is basically arteriovenous shunt normally the blood in the arteries come a uh, blood in the arteries come to the tissues the tissues or the cells consumes the energy and then the blood goes in the venules and then the larger veins and it returns to the heart when there is a connection between the arteries and the veins for example there is a connection between this large artery and vein blood is not going to the tissues it is directly coming to the veins the blood from here is directly coming to the veins due to the shunt there is a shunt is basically a connection between uh, an artery and vein that is known as av shunt arteriovenous shunt sometimes it may be called fistula as well so due to the shunt the resistance here is decreased or it is bypassed by pass so resistance is bypassed and blood starts coming directly from the arteries into the veins so the cardiac output starts increasing and here we see in the av shunt the cardiac output is quite above the control line and it is quite high it is like in very very similarly in hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism basically hyperthyroidism occurs uh, due to a condition in which there is increased secretion of thyroxine from the thyroid gland and it leads to increased metabolism increased metabolism at the cellular level due to increased metabolism there is there is secretion of certain nutrients or certain chemicals which causes dilatation of these blood vessels it causes dilation of the blood vessels which again leads to increase cardiac output so hyperthyroidism again leads to increase cardiac output then we have anemia anemia is basically deficiency of the iron iron deficiency now in iron deficiency the blood is basically thin the blood is basically thin and that the the cells cannot receive proper amount of oxygen because iron is responsible for uh, for taking oxygen to the tissues when there is deficiency of oxygen coming to the cells these cells signals the uh, send signals which is perceived by the body as decreased supply of blood so the heart compensates by increasing the cardiac output then there is vasodilation of the peripheral blood vessels is occurred in the hyperthyroidism so anemia there is thinning of the blood the blood is very thin because of deficiency of the iron most commonly iron deficiency anemia there are a lot of types of anemia but most commonly there is iron deficiency anemia anemia of any kind uh, may lead to increased high cardiac output because whenever there is deficiency there is anemia the blood is thin and there is dilation of the peripheral vessels so it definitely leads to high cardiac output again just like very very avian hyperthyroidism then in pregnancy in pregnancy the the metabolic needs of the human body is increased so again we uh, the body the cardiac the heart basically compensates by pumping more and more blood and pumping it more forcefully so pregnancy is again a condition which causes high cardiac output these are the factors there are a lot of other conditions like uh, paget's disease or some other conditions which leads to pathologically high cardiac output now here we have the control level this is something with which we are comparing the all the conditions which are causing high or low cardiac outputs now we are going to discuss the conditions which leads to pathologically low cardiac output now the conditions which basically causes pathologically low cardiac output 
are divided into two categories they are divided into two categories one category is cardiac and the other is non cardiac the conditions which we discussed in high cardiac output were mostly non cardiac they were mostly because of the decreased peripheral resistance they were mostly because of the decreased peripheral resistance but the condition which we are discussing now which leads to low cardiac output they are divided into two types the cardiac and the non cardiac types now here if we see we have the conditions like hypertension mild valve disease then myocardial infarction mild shock traumatic shock and the cardiac shock these are the conditions which if you see and compare they are causing the cardiac output below the the control points here we have the 100% of the normal cardiac output and cardiac index but these conditions are causing cardiac output lower than or less than the control points and these conditions like hypertension valve disease sh mild shock traumatic shock and, and cardiac shock they are of two main types they are cardiac and non cardiac cardiac types are basically the conditions which are due to the some problem in the heart like for example the myocardial infarction this one myocardial infarction in myocardial infarction the heart the heart basically if this is the heart muscle these heart muscle receive their own blood supply as well the heart muscle is the heart is basically pumping blood into the body but the heart muscle themselves need some energy in the and the blood that the blood vessel that is bringing the blood into the heart muscles when they get blocked at some point it leads to mi myocardial infarction so these conditions like myocardial infarction mild valve disease and severe valve disease like here this one severe valve disease again valve disease in valve disease there is a problem in the valves the heart chambers are connected with each other with different valves these valves closes when the ventricles contract and they open when the atria contract so that the blood can come into the ventricles but when the ventricles contract the blood should not go back into the atria if there is some problem in these valves then the the heart will not be able to pump complete blood out the blood will not be going out completely rather some of the blood may go back into the atria or if there is some valve problem here problem here in the aortic valve of pulmonary valve then the blood will not be able to go into the aorta so the mild valve disease and the severe valve disease and the myocardial infarction these are the cardiac issues these are the cardiac issues these can the in these conditions there is a problem in the heart so they these conditions lead to decreased cardiac output because the heart is unable to pump enough blood either due to the myocardial infarction or due to the valve disease then we have the shock we have the traumatic shock or the cardiac shock due to the mi if the heart is unable to pump enough blood it may it will be known as the cardiac shock but if there is loss of blood if there is loss of blood for example loss of blood this will not be a cardiac rather this will be a non cardiac problem and it will be considered as traumatic shock due to trauma there is blood loss and the heart is able to pump the blood the heart can pump the blood but the blood is being lost the blood is being lost 
so there is not enough blood that can return to the heart and the heart cannot pump enough blood otherwise the heart is normal so the the conditions which leads to low cardiac output are either cardiac issues or non cardiac issues so the cardiac issues included myocardial infarction mild and severe valve disease and the low cardiac output uh, includes the loss of blood or the traumatic shock some other conditions uh, some other conditions which causes uh, non cardiac low cardiac output non cardiac low cardiac output they include they include dilation of veins this occurs in syncope sudden dilation of veins occur so the, the 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 blood vessels which is bringing the blood back to the heart blood comes in the aorta and it goes back through the veins so if there is sudden dilation of the veins dilation of the veins the blood will be pooled in the tissues peripheral tissues and it will not be able to go back into the heart this can occur in syncope in dilation of the veins and it is one condition in which there will be low cardiac output another condition is obstructions of the vein obstruction this blood is being uh, this blood is being pumped in the aorta and this aorta brings the blood into the tissue the, the tissue is basically consumes the blood and when this blood is going back to the heart there is some blockage for example there is blockage of the inferior vena cava which brings the blood back into the heart or there is blockage of some other veins due to the obstruction or the blockage of the veins there is decreased venous return there is decreased venous return and due to decreased venous return there is low cardiac output again so there this is again uh, an example of non cardiac low cardiac output non cardiac low cardiac output another example of non cardiac problem is decreased muscle mass with the increasing age the muscle mass decreases so the metabolism also decreases when the metabolism incre uh, decreases the cardiac output automatically decreases so to summarize this there are some conditions which leads to pathologically high cardiac output and pathologically low cardiac output the 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 main or some prominent example of those conditions which leads to high cardiac output include the beri beri due to deficiency of b1 av shunt uh, arteriovenous shunt hyperthyroidism anemia and pregnancy these conditions causes cardiac output more than the control level then we have some examples some conditions which causes low cardiac output but the conditions which causes low cardiac output are divided into cardiac and non cardiac issues the cardiac problems include the myocardial infarction and the valve problem severe valve disease and mild valve disease these conditions basically leads to low cardiac output that are below the control point there is some problem in the heart the blood the heart is the heart muscles are either not receiving the blood or there is some problem in the valves due to which the blood cannot be pumped properly into the aorta then there are some non cardiac non cardiac causes of low cardiac output and they include dilatation of the sudden dilatation of the veins or obstruction of the veins which brings back uh, which brings back blood into the heart or there is decreased muscle mass or there is shock or there is loss of blood or there is uh, some traumatic shock so these are different conditions which may lead to pathologically high and pathologically low cardiac output thanks a lot for watching the video